Hello everyone and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 park building tips video for the lagoons. That is a mouthful. Lagoon good. Lagoon fun. I'll show you. I think we were all expecting a little more from the lagoons, at least the option to add rocks and foliage to it. But history repeats itself and just like the first game we have to use our own imagination. And the monorail. Not gonna lie, the lagoons are a bit limited and I do hope it's something Frontier improves upon by giving us things that we can place underwater and perhaps choose different fencing to line the lagoons with. But there's still more you can do with it than just vary the shape and size of them. So if you're struggling with how to incorporate the lagoons in your parks in a new way, then I think this video could give you some inspiration. Because in this video I'm going to show you five ways to use a lagoon more creatively in your parks. Obviously these tips are best suited for sandbox where you can build freely, but it technically works in any of the modes. If you like any of these ideas, give the video a like and subscribe for more park building tips, tricks and inspiration for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Okay, for starters, number one. In case you didn't know, you can dig down around the lagoon and expose more of its concrete base, meaning you can use the lagoon as a back wall for an area. For example, the back wall of an enclosure. Items like fences can overlap a little bit with the base of the lagoon, so you can get the fence right in there, ensuring nothing will escape. And rocks go into the base a little bit as well. I like the look of this as the backdrop to an exhibit. It's a lot taller than the concrete fence that we have to play with, and it just looks cleaner. So I think this could be particularly suitable for an enclosure for a particularly dangerous dinosaur or for a herbivorous enclosure that you maybe want to run a tour through because it is quite imposing to take the vehicle right by that super tall wall that you've created. In another example I've made I've used it as a back wall to a guest section again because I like how massive it looks. It really towers over the guests and gives that grand experience. You could also hide your staff facilities this way by digging out the ground behind a lagoon in the corner of your park somewhere and putting your hatcheries and staff centers and all of that sort of stuff over there. The second way to use the lagoon differently is to enclose a space and turn that into an enclosure. Obviously you can change up the shape and size of this and I think there are two main ways to go about it. The first thing I tried and I really liked was dig down the entire enclosed section and use a monorail as a tour that goes over the lagoon and the exhibit within. Monorails provide dinosaur visibility, so you can use it as a sort of ride for your guests as opposed to just transportation. Now, I've looped it back to the same station, but you don't have to do that. You can also take the monorail to another section of your park, so it does double duty for both transportation and visibility. The other way I've tried it was to actually raise the ground up a little bit and then put viewing platforms across the lagoon. The platforms have a really far distance on the viewing range, so this works really well, but it's also going to be cool to just see the silhouettes of the marine reptiles in the water below. Number three uses the same principle, but instead of turning it into an exhibit, you can turn it into a secluded guest section. For example, this could be the VIP area in your park. You connect it to the rest of the park with a monorail and then you can put anything in there you want. I went with big hotels, shops and even an aviary. To make the most of the space, I do suggest that you place the hatchery for the aviary, incubate and release your flying reptiles, and then just get rid of the hatchery. In sandbox, that shouldn't be a problem as long as you didn't put two species together that will fight, because they won't have any environmental needs and they won't need medical attention that way. And remember that you can play around with the elevation of the ground, because as you can see, I raised up a corner of it to be able to put a hotel right at the edge of the lagoon so people have a view of the lagoon from their hotel rooms. How cool is that in and of themselves? And I also was able to place a viewing gallery that could go underwater. So I think that's a really nice way to mix it up and make the most of that section in between. Tip number four is where the monorail tracks come in. If you've been with the channel for a while, you know I started using the monorail tracks in the first game to create arches over pathways and roofs over uh, guest sections. And I called them my my monorail malls, but also for, for the dinosaur exhibits to give them a little bit of an indoor area. And really those same ideas can be brought over into Jurassic World Evolution 2. I think it looks really pretty to line the lagoon with a monorail track. It gives it a sort of modern, minimalist, coliseum sort of vibe. 
You can also lower the monorail by lowering the ground all around the lagoon. This does of course mean you won't be able to place the underwater viewing galleries, but you can still place viewing platforms to get visibility that way and just use your imagination and pretend there's underwater viewing from the ground level of the platforms as well. I've always said this for Evolution 1 and I will continue to say this for Evolution 2. You do have to use your imagination with this game. The fifth way to spruce up your lagoons and make them look different is to create an indoor lagoon by building a roof using the monorail tracks. Yes, the process of doing this is a little tedious, especially with the delay there is currently on the construction of the monorail tracks. Really, Frontier, it takes too long. Please just get rid of that in sandbox. It's, it's annoying. But I do like how this brings some much needed variation into the park. And I think it especially makes sense for lagoons in the colder environments or in the desert, where the lagoons and the animals within it need to be protected from the elements. The pillars of the monorail track create really cool tunnels right by the lagoon to run your path through. And the pillars also go into the lagoon itself and underwater, which means there is at least some sort of backdrop to the underwater view instead of just underwater blue murkiness until one of the marine reptiles comes swimming by. I think it looks pretty spooky and also it gives scale to the creatures. Unfortunately, there's no collision on the pillars underwater, strangely, so you will at times see an animal clip through them. But regardless, I still really like the look of it. To get the tracks as close together as possible, you have to extend the end out a little bit further. So you start the next track, not at the very end of the previous one you placed, because if you do, they will want to snap together. Just look at what I'm doing and do as I do. I hope that that makes it clear. I don't know how else to form words to explain this, but I think if you look at what I'm doing over here, that should make it clear how you should go about this. This way, it's just the best way to get the tracks as close together as possible and really make it look like a roof. And again, use your imagination and just pretend that there is glass paneling in between the concrete supports. Those are my five tips for using the lagoons in new and creative ways, as creative as we can do at the moment. Again, I hope and foresee that there will be some improvements coming to the lagoons in future updates, keeping my fingers crossed. But for now, if you like these tips, leave the video a like, that helps me out so, so much. Welcome to all of the new subscribers. You're probably here from the Gaming Beaver. I hope you're enjoying the tips. This is what I do, not challenge mode. And yeah, I'm really excited to show you more for Jurassic World Evolution 2, so subscribe if you're down for that. All right, thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.